Hello, my name is Brian, and for this video, I'll just be showing you a little guide through um, in the simulation of steam method reforming on ANSYS Chemkin. You might also find this helpful if you're just trying to simulate a reaction of your own that involves catalysts. So I hope you find this video helpful. So service Chemkin uh, gives you a computational uh, model, but there are two uh, main factors that are required for Chemkin to do this. The first one contains a bunch of files, such as the gas phase kinetics file, the service kinetics file, and the thermodynamics file, a data file. And these, of course, are used for the uh, kinetic and thermodynamic analysis that Chemkin does to derive this computational model. I'll be diving into these uh, files uh, separately. And then the next thing to take into account are the physical parameters of the actual reactor its size, its length, the uh, inlet pressure, volumetric flow rate, and the uh, reactants concentration. So that must all be taken into account. The model depends on these factors. And so where most of the work should be emphasized is in the service kinetics file, because at least in my case, uh, all the reaction takes place at the surface of the catalyst. So this is where um, all my, my focus is on. The reaction that we're simulating is the method of forming, as I said, you might be using a different uh, reaction, but all the uh, adsorption that occurs uh, between methane and water uh, on the surface of the catalyst uh, is taken into account. Uh, and all the intermediates that are formed in this process must, uh, must also be taken into account, as well as uh, certain parameters, which I'll talk about next. Elementary reactions that one must take into account are either derived experimentally or from literature. For my work, we got all of our data from the article and they also developed a model of their own experimentally. Uh, so their experimental results is what we are trying to model. Um, this will also tell us that Kempkin uh, is working the way that it should and that the model that we can derive, uh, it will be reliable. Uh, so in the literature, they show that water and methane is being consumed uh, to create hydrogen, uh, some carbon monoxide, and very little carbon dioxide. In the article, we also find all the elementary surface reactions uh, as well as certain parameters that are required to fit into the Arrhenius uh, equation. Uh, there's also an additional parameter here called the surface coverage parameter. Not all the reactions have this and that's okay because if you look into the equation, if it's equal to zero, all of this will just be equal to one. Make sure to have uh, all these parameters and all these uh, reactions at hand because you will be needing it for the service kinetics file. All these files have to follow a certain format uh, which I followed uh, based on the manual uh, given by a reaction design. You can easily search this online for free um, and make sure to follow it step by step. Uh, your reactions might include additional parameters that I didn't take into account. So make sure to follow the format for your own specific reaction that you're trying to simulate. So for the service connects file, there are two main parts to it. The first one, you identify the catalyst as well as all the species that are absorbed on the surface of the catalyst or that uh, are in the surface of the catalyst uh, or that are formed in the surface of the catalyst. Um, here you identify the sites or the catalyst, um, which is the nickel and the site density of the catalyst uh, should be given by the literature. Um, and then for the bulk which of the nickel catalyst is just the atomic weight. The, the name of these doesn't have to be in the same format that I used. I chose to be arbitrarily. It does not have to be V and does not have to be S, but that was just uh, for me to distinguish uh, each of these uh, um, parameters. Um, and so they can stand out to me as well. Uh, so NIS is the nickel catalyst, and all of these are species that get formed or are adsorbed to the surface of the catalyst. Uh, and, he, and then finally, you write down all the reactions that we found from literature into this file uh, in, a, in a text format, a tab the limited text format, um, as well as all the parameters to satisfy the reaction, the Arrhenius equation. Um, and then here, you'll notice that uh, additional coverage are uh, being taken into account. Um, in this way. Notice also uh, the units that we're using uh, from the literature. Uh, we got that it was everything kilojoules per mole. Um, and here it's calories per mole, so make sure to uh, make a unit conversions if necessary. Uh, notice also that, that the reverse reactions uh, are not written down, but are written in this format and are, their parameters are annotated in this format followed by the forward slash. Make sure you take into account all of these forward slashes. Um, 
and anything followed by an exclamation mark is ignored by Kempkin. So you can use that tool to make notes for yourself. And once you're done with all your reactions, you just end with the words end, as you'll see in the manual. Secondly, we have a gas phase connects file. Nothing was happening in the gas phase for our specific reaction. Uh, so we just left this blank, but we also introduce here all the elements that are considered, um, even the, that of the catalyst itself. Uh, so make sure to write them all down and then follow that by end. Also, all the species in the gas phase uh, that you want to consider must be written down in here. Uh, here we have uh, water and methane and then end. Also, our inner um, air. And all of these other species are species that uh, can 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 be uh, produced from, from the reaction and that can um, be left out as, as in, in the gas phase. Uh, and then here you'll put any reactions that occur in the gas phase. For our case, that's empty because nothing's happening. And then followed it with end. Uh, finally, we have the thermodynamics data file. Uh, here uh, you have to include uh, properties for the surface species and the gas species. This is also why I use the letter B because this data file for the gas phase species was uh, given by the NASA database. Uh, and so I didn't want to uh, confuse the surface uh, species, which are enclosed by an S in a parentheses, uh, with the species on the surface of the catalyst. So that's why I used to use B uh, to distinguish these parameters from each other. And notice also how the same parameters that are given by water in the gas phase or steam, I, I copied and pasted into the surface species. Um, and that's because um, Kempkin doesn't really pay much attention to these parameters. They're just used as dummy variables. However, just to be safe, I didn't just put any random values in there. I put those values that are close to its gas phase species. Do that for all the intermediate species um, involved in your reaction. Finally, we have the inlet uh, feed properties and reaction configurations that you should take into account uh, for surface Kempkin. Uh, we'll be using a plug flow reactor, and the nickel catalyst um, is on the wall of the reactor. Um, and this is also an isothermal reactor, that's what we're assuming. Uh, the size of this reactor is uh, 27 millimeters in length with a 10 millimeter uh, diameter, uh, ranging from a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius to 900 degrees Celsius. Uh, this reaction was run in a pressure of one bar and a volumetric fl flow rate of four liters per minute with the small concentrations of water and uh, the rest made up by inert air. Make sure you make a note of them because they, you will find them in Chemkin. So that's it for the slides. Let's move on to the actual Chemkin application and start putting all of this together. All right, now that you have opened Chemkin, you're going to open a new project. Uh, I'll just call it test. Identify the inlet source by just clicking on it, and then the reactor type, which will be PFR in this case, and then you outlet. Uh, once you're done with that, you click on update project, and then you have a new panel uh, showing up over here. You're going to click on uh, pre processing. All right, so for working directory, you're going to choose a folder where the three files that you have are, and also uh, where all the data will be placed in. Okay, now that you have identified your working directory, Gonna click on a new chemistry set. You can call it whatever you want. I'll just call it test again, just to be consistent. Uh, and now you are going to identify your gas phase kinetics file, your surface kinetics file, and your thermodynamics kinetics file. You will browse again uh, for your files, and you will notice that you will only look, you only see the files that are in the folder that you have chosen for your working directory. All right, so take a minute to do that. By the way, when you are looking for your gas phase kinetics file or surface kinetics file, you'll notice that um, nothing might pop up at first, and it might be because it's not saved as an uh, .inp file, but that's okay. Just uh, click on it and then select all files, and then it will they will all pop up, and then just click on them one by one. All right, click on Save As, Save. Now that you are done, you're going to click on the Run Preprocessor. And usually at this point, uh, you'll either get an error message if there's something wrong with your format of the files um, or nothing at all. And that just means that everything is good to go. Uh, we can view the summary of our results and it says job status equals zero. Processing was successful. Awesome. Now we can get started on the second part. We're going to go back to the panel over here. 
uh, we're going to click on the PFR option, double click, uh, then double click again on C1 PFR. Your gas type for this reaction will uh, be looking at a fixed gas temperature. Um, turn on momentum equation, bulk activity equation, not necessary for this case, and your residence time calculation. And here's where we put in the parameters that were given to us by our literature for the ending actual position. This basically means the length of your uh, reaction. Uh, 27 millimeters in length for this one. Uh, diameter, uh, 5 millimeters, not 10 millimeters in length, sorry. Uh, then for temperature, now uh, we're going to set up a temperature profile. To do that, uh, we're going to go here uh, under constant, change it to new profile. Uh, and the profile has to have uh, an increment for the distance of the reactor as well as the temperature. So we're going to make our temperature profile go from one end of the reactor to the other end. Uh, so it starts at zero millimeters uh, and it's all the way down to 27 millimeters. Um, and let's just increment this by 10. You can choose whatever value you like. Uh, and then for temperature values, we want them in degrees Celsius. I want to start at 100 degrees Celsius and end at 900 degrees Celsius. And we're going to make the, the same amounts that we put in for the distance, which is 10. And there we go, at a distance of 3 millimeters, the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. And then if you scroll all the way down, 27 millimeters, you'll get a temperature of 900 degrees Celsius. Awesome. Then click on Done. Click on Save. And name your temperature profile. 10. Test. Awesome. Um, and then for pressure, we're going to go again with what's in the data on the bar. Uh, and you all will be done here. Now for this specific uh, simulation, since we're incorporating the catalyst, we wanna uh, we wanna acknowledge that only the catalyst surface species is present. So we're gonna click on NIS and then uh, side fraction is just one and that'll be it then you go to c1 inlet uh, for other parameters um, here we'll you, you can have a different variety to choose from but i'll just stick to what's given to us from the literature which is 4000 uh centimeter cube per minute when the li literature uh it's liters four liters per minute but liters to uh centimeters will be uh, 4,000. Uh, and then go to species specific properties. Um, and here you identify your reactants. We are starting with, uh, here we will identify our metric flow rates. I'll just follow the units uh, again from the literature. Well, they use liters per minute. Here we have centimeter cube, so we just use some unit conversion and we get a 4,000 centimeters cube per minute. Then we go into species specific properties. Uh, here you identify how much of what reactant you're starting off with. Uh, the literature says that we have 2% of water. Uh, and then for methane, we have uh, 1.6. And the rest was nitrogen. 96.4. Oops. Uh, uh, now we want it in terms of a mole fraction, so we just click on normalize on these percentage values. All right, and Kemkin does that for us automatically. Awesome. Um, now you are pretty much done. Click on the running, the running calculations. Uh, begin. And awesome, we got your results. And then it will give you the options to plot results by selecting new settings. You do that for your first run. Um, now here you have a bunch of parameters that you can analyze. Uh, just for sake of time, we just click on all. Make sure to get all species, even including uh, those that have uh, zero data sets. And just to make sure I got all of them, I'm gonna clear them all out and then select all. Then uh, make sure that you click on this, use Excel to post process so that all your data can be collected in Excel. Process your solution. And just give it a second. Awesome. It's okay if you get this notification. Don't worry about it. All right. You'll 
you'll get this too. And now usually uh, you'll get all your files popped up in here, but you have to manually search for it on your files. So take a minute to do that in case you're finding um, that, in case you come across that problem. So look for that folder that they use for your working directory. Okay, you should be seeing all your files in here. Uh, the file that you're looking for should say one solution number one. Click on that. And then you have a bunch of data to play around with. And I only will be looking into the temperature profile. Well, it doesn't matter if you don't, if you're not analyzing pressure, but just to begin grouping stuff together. I'll do this shortcut. Let's go back up. Go to insert graph. And then you just uh, go down to see uh, the reactions that you are interested in. Um, all right, so for ours, it's just methane. And here's methane. Um, and if you don't like these uh, variables, don't worry. Let's change them all at once. Awesome. Uh, so here's one. And as you can see, uh, no methane uh, is being consumed for some reason uh, over the temperature range that we input to Kempkin. Uh, so hopefully you have better luck than I than I do. Uh, let's see what other graphs we can make. Uh, let's look at hydrogen. Still uh, nothing helpful. Uh, well, hydrogen is being produced just just that very small uh, amount. And yeah, let, let me just show you guys. Uh, whoops. We have for water. Yeah, and nothing's occurring for water either. So there is definitely something wrong with uh, the work that we have uh, here. And so hopefully for you guys, you guys have better luck than, than I do. Uh, good luck with your work. And I hope that you found this video and tutorial helpful.